Hi folks, Eric with Bailey Industrial and today we're going to talk routers and specifically uh, our WR32 router. This is our two foot by three foot wood router table. Uh, it has a four horse air cooled spindle on it. This is a great little machine for the hobbyist, for the light industrial use, uh, small signage, things like that. Can cut various types of materials on it from wood to plastics to even some uh, light gauge aluminum on it as well. So we're going to go through this machine, go through the controller and a few other operations. All right, so before we get into the controller and operation of the machine, let's talk about assembly. Uh, this machine is very simple and pretty much is ready to go out of the box. This is a sturdy frame, full welded frame. So this is very, very sturdy and well made. There are a few things you do have to put on uh, when you get the machine. One is the feet that are on the bottom of the table to get everything level and true. Uh, the controller needs to plug into the electronics and you do need to plug in the plug for the power supply itself. So now we've discussed some of the assembly on the machine. Uh, now we're going to discuss the actual operation and how it operates. It's very, very simple, but the first thing we're going to want to do is turn the machine on. The machine's going to boot up and then at that point we'll start going through the controller. So the first thing the machine is going to look for is its home position and on the controller it's going to ask to go to its reference point or its home position and simply just hit OK on the controller and the gantry will move and return to its home position. Once the machine's homed, now at this point we can actually move the gantry around to wherever we want on the table and it's pretty simple by using your X plus and minus, your Y plus and minus and your Z plus or minus. And you can move multiple axes at one time as well. And then the Z up and down, minus and plus. So now at this point, we'd be ready to put material on the table and set our origin point for our cut file. So now, as you can see, we've moved the gantry back out of the way using our controller. And what we want to do is set this table up for the actual cutting operation. And the first thing we want to do is get a solid piece of wood on this table and use it as our sacrificial board or basically our board that is going to get a few witness marks on it from the tool as it cuts our good material which will lay on top. So this is going to be a board that's going to be a consumable item that will just basically wear out over time as you cut into it. But this way you're not ever going to hit your tool to the extruded bed that's on this machine. Um, and the way we're going to do that, we'll put our board on here and we'll clamp it down with our T-slot clamps and get it in position. Okay, so now that we have the spoil board down and in place and secure, now we want to fasten our actual material to this, which is going to be our material we're going to cut our part out of. So let's get going on that. So now we have our table set up for the actual cutting operation. We have our spoil board down and in place and secure, and we have our cutting material fastened to it. Uh, now at this point, it is important to note you always want to wear safety glasses uh, when cutting and using the machine. And in this case here, we have screws literally holding our material down. So we want to be careful not to hit our tool to those screws. And the tool we're going to use for this demonstration is a quarter inch end mill. It's got two flutes on it. They're just straight flutes. It's a very common tool um, for, this, for this demonstration. Now what we want to do is bring the gantry forward, put the tool in the collet, and do the touch-off using the tool touch-off puck. So now we're going to reposition our gantry and get it up to the front of the, the table here and get our tool installed. Uh, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to hit the X plus and move my, my spindle over to the center more and then hit my Y minus to move it up. So now we have the gantry forward and in position. We're going to put the tool 
in the end of the spindle. Uh, the controller itself is magnetic on the back, which is nice, so you can set it down, not worry about it falling off or sliding off. So first thing I'm going to do is take the nut off the end of the spindle. Uh, this is an ER25 style collet, very common collet size, and what I'm going to do is actually snap it into the nut first. It's important to do that and not put the tool in the collet first because then it will not clip into the nut properly. Um, then what we're going to do is take our tool and put it in that collet. Put a little pressure, make sure it gets down in there. And what we're trying to do is not put that cutting surface of the tool itself in the collet because that can damage the collet over time. But we also want the tool in the collet enough, the shank of the tool, so that it's held properly because this collet's going to squeeze down and hold that tool once it's tight on the nut. So then we're just going to thread this on. And then use our wrenches, which come with the machine as well. And put some decent torque on that collet and make sure it's tight and snug. And at that point, the tool's installed and we're ready to do the tool touch off. Now to do the tool touch off, we're going to use the little puck right here, the touch off pad. And we're going to place that down here on our actual material itself and just put it on here. And we're going to hold it in place and do our touch off. And then at that point, our tool is calibrated to off this work surface. And now the, the depths that we gave it in our software program will now make sense to the machine and it should cut properly. So now we have our spoil board in place. We have our material uh, fastened to it. We have our tool in place and touched off. So everything's pretty well calibrated at this point. Uh, we're going to now plug our thumb drive into the console and run our program. A dialog box will appear on the controller indicating that you've plugged in a USB. Now at this point we'll go through the controller and all the adjustments within it. So now we're going to discuss some of the manual operations of the controller. One of them is the spindle. The S off right there on the controller means spindle off. So if we press the number 5 key, it will literally turn the spindle on. The spindle speed is adjustable. The max spindle speed for this machine is 18,000 RPM, but we can adjust it uh, up to that point or down from there as the machine is running a part program. And to do that, you hold the shift key down and hit the number 1 or 7 button to slow it down, and the number 7 to increase the RPM on the spindle. 7S would be the maximum and that is at 18,000 RPM. And then we can simply shut the spindle off as well. So now we're going to do some manual cuts using the manual operations. First thing we're going to do is move our spindle into position and get it off to the side of the material. And then we can bring our Z height down and what we'll do is we'll start the spindle. And this is a good way to test your feeds and speeds uh, on the material that you're going to use and on the tool that you're using as well before you actually cut the program. So we'll turn our spindle on and very carefully we'll plunge into the material at this setting and we'll just move our gantry. Doing all this manually and shutting the spindle off and then raising our Z height up. And we can get kind of a good feel if we're cutting at the right speed, get a good feel for the tool and the material, and uh, just try to help understand the operation of the machine. So now what we're going to do is set a machine origin for our program that we run. And this is required every time you want to run a program. And what we'll do is we position our, our spindle on our material in our lower left corner of our material. And what we'll do then is hit our x, y equals zero button and what that'll do is clear out our x and our y coordinates that are in here. So when we press that it's going to tell us that that is what we're going to clear and in this case we want to hit OK. And now those coordinates are cleared. So what that means is when I move my gantry around and I get off that origin point, 
I need to get back to that point to run my file, to run my part. The way to do that is to hold shift and hit the number five button and the gantry or spindle will return back to that original origin. So provided that the operator doesn't move the material, that origin will stay in the controller until it's changed. So now we're going to go into the controller and actually make the changes for the gantry speed itself. First thing we're going to change is how fast the gantry is going to move between cuts and then we're going to change the speed as to what it would be while it's cutting. So to do that we're going to hit our menu key. We're going to scroll down to number four which is operation parameters. Hit OK. And we're going to basically change line item number one and two. The G00 speed in line item number one is our moving speed, not our cutting speed. This is when how fast the uh, gantry will move between cuts. To make the change we'll just hit OK and we'll put in our new desired number, 5,000 millimeters, and we'll hit OK. OK again, and that's locked in. Same thing with the GXX speed. We'll scroll down, select it, and this is our gantry speed. This is how fast the gantry will cut or move as it's actually cutting. And we'll change this as well. Let's say we want to go a little slower. We'll put in 1,000, hit OK, and that's locked in. So now when we make our adjustments in our speed manually as the machine is cutting using the plus and the minus or the number one and seven, what we're doing is we have now a ceiling that we cannot go past on our cut speed. We cannot go past 1,000 millimeters in our cut speed right now, but we can go down from that and that's what that adjustment is for. So let's look at a few more things in this controller. Let's hit our menu key again and we're going to go into operations. We're going to hit OK. And the first thing you'll see here in line item number one is back to reference point. And basically what that means is that you can home the machine here. So if I hit OK, we can home all axes or we can home them individually. And if we hit OK, the, everything on the gantry will move and home. Another part of the controller is that we can save multiple different origins on the table. We'll go to our menu, scroll down to operations, hit OK, and on line item number eight it says origin list. If I hit OK, what we can do is where the spindle and gantry is right now, we can save that origin. So by selecting it, hitting OK, putting a little check mark up there by it, and I hit the number one key, which is save. I can save, hit OK here, I can save our current position on the table. Then when I come back, if I have a jig or a fixture I need to put on this, this table, I can call up that specific origin point and provided I put my jig in the exact same spot, I can bring the machine right back to that exact same spot without doing a lot of excessive setup and tweaking and moving of the machine to get it just perfect. I can go down here and select multiple different origins. Like I said, there's eight of them that you can save in here. So that's real beneficial to use if you're doing any kind of production work. Now staying in our operations menu, hitting OK, we also can do a ring or nesting on the controller at the table. Now generally it would be probably something you would want to do in the software. It just seems a little bit more easier and it's got a little bit more settings in the software to do a ring, but you can do it at the table. If I hit OK, it's pretty simple. It gives us how many rows we want, how many columns we want, and the spacing between those. So we can come down here and select those and make our changes accordingly. So the next function we're going to look at is actually loading our USB file that we created into the machine so we can cut it. So we're going to hit our menu key and we're going to go into our USB files and hit OK. And here is where we'll scroll through and find our appropriate file. I'll just grab this one here. When we grab our file, we're going to hit the OK button. We'll get a little check mark by the file. And then we need to hit number one to actually lock that in. And at that point now, that program is ready to cut. Now we simply can hit the green button and that part will run off that program. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to just dry run a program, meaning 
we're not going to cut material. I touched off our tool so that it's above the material, so that we're actually going to cut the material. We're just going to hover above it. Because what we're going to show here is how you can back up in the program. For instance, if you break a tool uh, or something like that and you need to stop the machine and replace your tool, uh, we're going to show you how you can back up in the program to replace the tool and not lose the part that you were cutting at the time. So we have our part loaded, our program loaded, and we're ready to run it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit our green button, which is going to start our program. Their RPM is going to ramp up on the spindle, and everything's going to move and start cutting. So at this point, let's say our tool breaks. Well, what I would do is I would stop the process, stop the program by hitting our escape button. And then what I'm going to do is go into menu and stay in operations. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to go to li select line. I'm going to hit OK there. And what it gives me is our total number of lines, basically our lines of code in this particular program, and the line that I actually stopped on, which in this case was number seven. So what I can do at this point, I could go up and I can select that line. I hit OK first. I make my change. Maybe I want to back up to number five. And I can scroll down from there and hit Execute Now. And then the machine will back up a little further than where it actually broke the tool off and continue the process. So that'll do it for the WR32. If you have any questions on this machine or any of our others, please contact us at Bailey.com. Thanks for watching.